Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, and this week we are back at the Chaz restaurant in the Raphael Hotel cooking another signature dish with their executive chef, Charles DeBlong. To begin our chat, we're going to talk with the director of food and beverage, David Thistle. David, thank you for inviting us back into Chaz. Bonnie, welcome. Glad to have you here Okay, again. so you're a new face for us. I am. I'm pretty new here at Chaz. Okay, tell us about what you're wanting to accomplish here for the restaurant, both for the hotel and the community. It's all about the chef. Um, oh. We don't usually try to label ourselves a steakhouse okay. or a fish house or, or, or that. Um, we want the chef to be able to move with the seasons and to be able to make what's happening right now and use his influence to, to affect the menu. Now I know you have a little to do with the beverages and after we're in the kitchen we're going to come back and look to you to help pair the signature dish. What that. are you wanting to accomplish with the, the beverages here? Well as a matter of fact I just uh, implemented uh, here at Chaz a, a new cocktail menu uh -huh. uh, which is going back to classic cocktails. Um, we decided to have some specialized menus that give a brief history of, of cocktails oh, like the Manhattan and the Singapore Sling and, and um, uh, that seems, uh, we just started a, a few weeks ago and that seems to be catching on quite well. And we also have our Strings on the Green which is, uh, What's that? well we have a, a small concert. Uh, it's um, uh, small duets and, tre and threesomes and they play different types of uh, orchestrated music outside on the lawn in front of the hotel. And we serve beautiful view. And we serve beverages out on the patio. Uh, oh, we how have nice. we have a special menu of mojitos and uh, uh, cucumber collins and, and some different cocktails that go well with the heat and the outside of the Kansas City. So. so I'm hearing you you know obviously we're what 1930s. This was a pig farm, the class. <laughs> From then, what I've heard, yes. Yes, and then through the vision of J. C. Nichols, it became this very, very beautiful plaza, our sister city, Seville, Spain. And here, I'm hearing drinks from that kind of era come here being true to our traditions. We love traditions in Kansas That's City, good. bringing back some of those drinks. And I know with a bit of a modern twist, but I think it's fun for the next generation to learn about what those drinks were, what they meant, and to enjoy them in a new setting like Chaz. That's correct. And even some of the recipes, we kept true to the original. So we really wanted yeah. to uh, even order some of the uh, whiskeys and scotches that were used uh, from the best of our knowledge back then, and, and people can actually see what a true Manhattan used to taste like when uh, before all the modern before additions the modern. came on to see, it. So. You know, there's a reason something's classic. I believe so. <laughs> you that, know, just like correct. music, it's it's timeless. And thank you for per using your beautiful outside for music and drinks. What a wonderful way to spend an evening or at the end of the day shopping to finish it here. Every Friday and Saturday night we have that, so. Okay, well David, thank you for, first of all, welcome to Kansas thank City you. and to Chaz. Thank you for inviting us back in here. Now I think we're gonna go talk to Chef. Oh, very good. And then we're gonna go in the kitchen and make that signature dish. Sounds great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We continue our chat with the chef here at Chaz with their executive, Chef Charles DeBlanc. Chef, thank you for inviting us back into your kitchen. Thanks for coming. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your journey to Chaz. And did you always know you wanted to be a chef? <laughs> that causes you know, the laughter. The short version or the long version? <laughs> well, maybe in between. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll give you the in between. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And finally when I turned 18, my mom told me there was a thing called culinary school and I always loved to cook. Mom's no best. Mm -hmm. She took me down there, I didn't think I'd like it, I saw it and that's what I had to do. So, got into culinary school and it was just love at first sight? Yep. Uh, what, um, what was your takeaway from culinary school? Because everybody has an aha moment or so, many people have aha moments, did you? You know, I don't think, for a lot of us, the aha moment doesn't happen until a few years down the road when we've been in the industry for a while. You acquired some basic skills. What, was this in Atlanta? Where Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. All right, went to culinary school there and then started moving around, trying to find your style, your sense of, who along the way inspired you? 
Uh, anybody and everybody. I, I couldn't oh, nice. name. I couldn't name one. It, it, it's always everybody has something you can take away from. How close relationship are you having with the growers and the food product makers? Is that just back and forth? You know, we, we've got a very good relationship with uh, a lot of different ones in town. There's oh, yeah. a lot of seasonal things on the menu, and 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 it really is. We do we've got a great growing environment here in the Midwest. I know we Rich do. Rich soil. We, we do. We do. So, what inspires you in the kitchen? Really, really good stuff. Last week it was peaches. Mm -hmm. So when I, I went out to, uh, actually out to uh, Pal Gardens, you picked, I picked peaches you picked this time. Peaches. I, always, I bug them every year about the peaches. <laughs> I go out and I pick fresh okay. peaches. So I mean, here we have a chef who does some of the harvesting. That's, ins yeah, yeah. that's well, it's, inspirational. It's, 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 it's a lot of fun to have a garden like that. And you don't oh, get to do that. Every, you just don't get to do that. Um, so it's really cool to be able to walk out and pick stuff that's ready that day off the vine that day or off the tree oh, that day and fragrance then, alone. And then I just take it back and eat it. And, and you I did. have our time cooking it for people. <laughs> okay. So what happened to those peaches that you harvested? Uh what did we do with them? I did uh vanilla honey poached peaches oh with my. uh grilled uh grilled French toast. You're inspired by the ingredients. It just now, wh what are you trying to impart to the cooks in your kitchen? Uh, you've been inspired by cooks all uh, as chefs all along the way. What are you trying to? What are you trying? How are you trying to inspire your cooks? One, there's 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 always consistency, um, and then it's just have have a good time in the kitchen. No attitudes fun. in the kitchen, and have yeah. fun with it. We're we're cooking because that's what we love to do. If you don't love to do it, then get out of the kitchen. What is, what is style? Of you know, a lot of times you think in French or you think in Italian, but it's really now it's it, it's, it's kind of what do you like to cook and how do you like? It? I love frying stuff. You'll find a lot of fried stuff in my mm. kitchen, so I'll fry all kinds a lot of things. Of people I like, oh like, uh, yeah, I like barbecue. I like you'll find all that stuff in my kitchens. Anywhere I go, you're always gonna find there's gonna be fried food. There's gonna be you know country ham and you know things like that so kind so, of there's a little bit of comfort well you're from the south lot, so we there's would expect lot, there's lot, that you took that with you stuff and and then adding in taking taking kind of american style cooking and then adding in you know french techniques or different techniques or whatever we've picked up along the way what are we going to make today we're going to do uh Shallot roast chicken, shallot braised chicken breast mm -hmm. with sauce bercy, which is just is derivative that? of a velouté, like a t typical velouté, which is chicken stock tightened with a with a blonde roux, and then it's got shallot and wine reduction in it, a little parsley. Very, very simple, very old school, but mm -hmm. it's delicious still. Mm -hmm. And again, it's the whole classic thing. It's and classic for a reason because it, it still tastes good. It still tastes good. Okay, so chef, I think that you and I should go in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I, we should begin that signature dish. Absolutely. And then we're going to come to the bar and, and pair it. But Tell we get to drink. Yes, we do. <laughs> so I think we need to get in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I think you need to come with us. We are in the kitchen at Chaz with our executive chef, Charles DeBlanc ready to make a signature dish. Chef, what do we have here for our mise en place? All right, so we've got our two chicken breasts. Yes. We've frenched them, they're bone in, um, or the peg bone as they call them. we got the little wing bone in, just yes. a little extra flavor in the look. Got a little wild arugula, parsley, shallot, whole butter, olive oil, vegetable oil, salt, white pepper, white wine, black pepper, and yes. green tomatoes, of course. Green tomatoes. So we are ready to make the dish. Where do we begin? We're going to start by getting the chicken in the oven. Okay. So while that's cooking, okay. we can do other things. We're going to season it with salt. And obviously kosher salt. And a little black pepper. You know, I'm told that keeping the skin on and the bone in adds some flavor. Yeah, you know, it's just extra flavor. And that's kind of why we're doing chicken today. Okay. It's just to show people you can make a really good chicken dish. All right, so you preheated this pan and you've added what kind of oil? Just a little canola oil, some of the really oil. high smoking oil. Don't use butter, don't use olive oil. You waste your olive oil here. You can, okay. you can finish with the olive oil. All right, put the plantation side down first. Always, always. Plantation side down first, that way we're going to get that nice dark sear on it, this crust. And you know, people start moving the product on the pan, don't do that. Don't touch it. Don't and, touch it. And so the key is getting the pan warm enough yeah. so that it's going to sear and do exactly what we want. 
you want to get to that point where you think you might start to burn the oil, then you go in with it. Oh, green tomatoes, a southern comfort dish. Oh, man. You brought ever. Atlanta is with you, ever. Charles. Oh, uh, isn't that beautiful? See some nice, fresh green tomatoes. Um, so how did this get started? They wait, they... They, they couldn't wait for them to ripen and they yeah, had to do you know, something. A, a, lot, a lot of these things start because maybe they had too large a tomato crop. What are we going to do with all these tomatoes? They're picking them, they got a bunch of green tomatoes, somebody's already start frying them. There you go. They and now fried. they're here at Chad. They are. Okay. <laughs> okay. Know, our beautiful green tomatoes, what next? Now we're going to go back down to the chicken. I can, I can do smell. that. I'm it's following ready. you. And so you bring out an excellent point, and that is you can smell it with and what we're going to do, oh, we're going to sear it on the, on, the, on the bottom side now to get, get that color and the caramelization, that flavor that you're going to get from that. And then we're going to flip it back over and finish it in the oven, skin side down, so it gets nice and crisp for us. And what temperature in the oven? I'm going at 400 degrees. We're, 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 we're going to do, do a quick. Okay, so it locks in juices and flavors. All right, are we ready? Let's go create the oven now. And now we can go finish. You just put kosher salt kosher into salt and what pepper we have. And all this. This is a standard breading station. Standard breading so station. So we've got flour, we've got egg and breadcrumbs. And we've got panko breadcrumbs. And I love panko breadcrumbs. I wanted to talk about that. It is. It provides the greatest crunch. Yeah. It used to be just Japanese breadcrumbs, but you can get them anywhere. You can get them anywhere. Okay. Any grocery store has them. So and they, they work great. Right. So standard breading, I get you. you're going to go dry wet dry, always. Flour to get the egg to stick, egg to get the panko to stick. On to the fryer. I'm following. Oh, fryer. Uh, no. All right, so if we're at home and we don't have this commercial equipment, we can take a Dutch oven or whatever, put some canola oil or yep. peanut just, oil. Just use, a, use some with a high smoking point again, high peanut oil, canola oil. What Great seed oil. Great seed oil. Really nice and what temperature are we wanting? 350. And you can just stick a candy thermometer in. But please, when you're at home, uh, uh, cook, uh, cooking equipment with high sides so you don't get splattered. Okay. Now, a sauce bursi is, is basically a derivative of a volute. Okay. Volute is mother sauce. We're going to make an old school sauce with old school cocktails. It works out perfect. Okay. Um, We're being consistent here. So how did we begin? Did we come with a, a stock? We're, we we're sorry. The, the blue taste started with the chicken stock, a little okay. bit of white wine, and then we thicken it with a blonde roux. Basic, a blonde basic. A little white yes. pepper. Blonde roux is a... It, butter, a and butter and flour. Butter flour. Okay. One part butter, one part flour. A little white wine. Yes. All the white wine. <laughs> Now while that's going, we're going to pull this chicken out real quick and okay. pour our excess shallots on it so we can raise it down. So we added some shallots just before the chicken finished cooking. Mm -hmm. So once they came out, you give them a seasoning while they're still warm. Correct, correct. We want them to really, really absorb that salt. Oh, amazing. It's a big plate of green tomatoes. So we're gonna ladle in some of our. So we're our adding volute. warm to warm. Warm to warm. We don't want to cool it off. We want this to be finished quick. And then I'm gonna deglaze the receipt. And please do that off the fire so we don't have any issues at home. No, no accidents. No please. accidents. We're gonna finish with a little fresh parsley. Okay, nice fresh green. And, and then we're gonna monte it with a whole lump of butter. What would a sauce be without butter? And, you know, you don't have to use tons, but it adds a richness uh, to it. But well, you can't achieve any other way. It adds that richness to it. It'll also help the sauce keep from skinning over. Now. Oh, I have to taste it again. Yeah, well, this it changes is every time. So it's you know fun. what it does? Oh my gosh. Now you get that little bit of wine, now you really get that butter in there. And the parsley added that, the butter of course, but the parsley added that brightness to mm -hmm. the sauce you wouldn't have otherwise. Please, do not serve anything to family or friends that you haven't tasted first. Uh, exactly. And, and the sign of a good, a good kitchen is there's plenty of tasting spoons everywhere. Right. So are we ready to play, We're ready to play Chef?
Charles, I recently heard a saying that I love, and that is, the eyes are the window to the mouth. So, open our eyes for a <laughs> show. All right, so we're gonna plate it up. All we're gonna do is a big old pile of Bercy. And that Bercy was heaven. I know I've tasted it, you know. Okay, what next? Um, go green tomatoes. Yes. Center of the plate again. Yes. We go our chicken breast. Yes. Now we're gonna finish with a little bit of baby arugula. Okay, so this is baby arugula, and what are you essentially doing? Making a little dressing. Making a little for salad. It? For it. A little, little salad with a little olive oil. You don't want to add too much to it. This dish already has enough going on. Right. This is a fairly intense flavored green. It is, and it's gonna help balance out the uh, richness of that bursi. Okay, so just a little olive oil and, and kosher salt. A little olive oil and salt. Chef, I believe we have a signature dish here. That's what you get. <laughs> we have just been in the kitchen at Chaz with their executive chef, Charles DeBlong. We have made chicken braised with shallots, fried green tomatoes, and sauce bursi. What should we drink with the signature dish? To answer that question, we are back with David Thistle, the Director of Food and Beverages. What should we drink, David? Well, welcome back. Before my dinners, yes. I like to stop at the bar for a cocktail. Okay, what should we have? Just an important prelude to an awesome dinner. So we'll Get all relaxed and in the mood. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Here at Chaz, we've, we've got a classic cocktail menu. Okay. And it's something that you'll see a trend back in the industry, back towards the classic cocktails. Because we decided the classic's there for a reason. That's correct. Okay. What I like to drink, it, it's uh, a Manhattan. Okay, and tell us what's in the Manhattan. Our Manhattan it goes back to some very basic ingredients. Okay. I use a uh, hundred proof uh, Rittenhouse okay. rye. Yes. Uh, then of course we use little Martini Rossi sweet vermouth. Yes. A uh, touch of bitters. Yes. And topped off with a uh, maraschino cherry. All right. So we're back to when did you tell me this drink began? Well, Manhattan's known as the king of cocktails. Uh, for a reason, yes. Yes, and it's known said to be back in the 1870s. Oh my goodness. Invented at the Manhattan Club in uh, the Big Apple of New yes. York City. So. Yeah. Oh, that's where it began. Oh, exactly. Manhattan. Hello. Okay. All right, so now we've had our cocktail, we're relaxed, we're in the mood for this magnificent signature dish. What should we drink with the dish? Well, it's always hard to pair with chef's awesome food all the time. And wine is, it's a taste thing, so it it's, it's, taste. it's who likes what. Yes. What I picked out this evening is uh, a wine, it's a Pinot Noir. Yes. From Decoy Wines. Okay. Now, Decoy may not be as well known as their parent company, which is Duckhorn. Okay, now, so now we know we're in Sonoma. Correct. Yes. Um, the reason I chose this is uh, we decided here at the Raphael that we wanted to upgrade what some restaurants call their house wines. So we moved our house wines up to a line of decoy wines, okay. uh, which we feel is a great value, a better tasting wine, um, and obviously it's it's made from a vineyard that does some awesome work with um, from Duckhorn Winery, so okay. uh, they, they produce it. You know, a lot of times people will pair a white wine with chicken, but this has a lot of heft to it, especially as fried green tomatoes. <laughs> and that, you know, we braised it in shallot. Yes. So, shallot, so the pinot's gonna stand up to that? It will, because uh, this this pinot will have um, a little bit of a tobacco flavor oh, to it, and a little bit of, uh, I guess they call it forest spore, is mm -hmm. some of the uh, terminology that mm -hmm. uh, I've heard associated with it. Um, it does also have some of the red berry family, so you'll get a little bit of the darker red berry uh, flavor in that also. But that's going to stand um, up to those shallots. Th that was the that was the trick. That's why I had to think around a little bit and decide what would work out well. So I I think this would be a great match. We've got a match. We have just been in the kitchen at Chaz making a signature dish with their executive chef, Charles DeBlanc. Went to the bar, the sommelier paired it with the wine to taste this creation and sip the selection. We have Judith Furtick. Judith, thank you. She's a 
cookbook author, a food stylist and writer, and most recently published The Gardener and the Grill. Yes. And you and I have known each other a while. A while? Yes, we have. I think since we were in second grade. Second, wasn't it? Yeah, that was in <laughs> second grade. Well, Judah, thank you for taking time out of your very frenetic schedule to come be our celebrity. Well, thank taster. you, Bonnie. This is really tough work, but somebody has to do somebody it. Somebody has to do it. All right, Chef and David, please tell us. Okay. Here's what we got. We got shallot braised chicken, fried green tomatoes, a little baby arugula, and a sauce bursi. Oh, okay. And David, the director of food and beverages here, selected a wine for us. David, please, what are we drinking? Well, I selected, it's one of our house wines, house but we've upgraded our level of house uh, wines here at Chaz to match Charles's great food. Um, this is a decoy. Uh, Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. It's from the uh, Duckhorn Winery. So uh, we carry their full line of, of decoy products. We just really think it's a great wine. Um, it, we think it'll match really well with um, not just the chicken, but it's got some dark cherry and um, uh, berry tones to it. Also a little bit of uh, tobacco and forest floor, which should hold up to, uh, to Charles's meal this evening. I can't wait to taste the forest floors. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A, a unique description, um, a unique for sure. Unique description. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Judith, you have to taste first. I All would right. suggest you get in there before I lose control. All right. Okay. This looks wonderful. So I got to be in the kitchen, of course, while we were doing this wonderful chicken. Yeah, the chicken looks really neat. You know, and well Chef rounded. likes to keep the skin on and some yes. bones because he likes the flavor that it imparts. So we'll just get a little bit of everything, yes. hopefully, oh, on one I, bite. I confess, I've already done some of the fried green tomatoes. Oh, I mean, there's the just sauce. so much control that you can exercise when you're right. in the kitchen. That's right. All right. Okay. This is the first time I tasted them together, and now I, I understand why the combination. Also, Chef is from the South, so he brings comfort food along with his classical training. Oh, word. I love the French sauce with the green tomatoes and the, and the different take on fried chicken, and, and, it, and it's very fresh with the baby arugula salad. It is lovely. I would not have thought of this combination. Mm -mm. Um, so he uses chicken stock and then he thickens it with the roux and some wine. He threw in some parsley to bring up that bright green flavor. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, really mm -hmm. And the peanut goes with it really well. It does. Mm -hmm. That food and wine pairing, I think, is really a tricky thing. And I think especially with something like fried chicken and fried green tomatoes, I think, you know, you do have to have something that kind of stands up to those brown flavors, and this really does well. You know, and, and David, David mentioned that because traditionally we think of white wine with chicken, and that would not have worked here given the bold flavors that Chef has brought into the dish. Right. Ooh. I'm losing control here, but I, I seriously cannot help it. Okay, now Judith, you've had many years devoted to the food industry. Um, tell us, I, so I remember you from Pig Out Publications. You were a barbecue queen, mm -hmm. which is hilarious, mm -hmm. but not so different from the passions of chef in that that comfort Kansas City Southern Right, it's a different, it's a little different thing. You're mm -hmm. sort of trying to take a, a dish and make it simple enough that people can make it at home. And, um, and, and any more if uh, people will tell you in a hurry, you'll hear about it online or whatever if they tried to make a recipe and it doesn't work. So it used to be you didn't, you know, if, if something, you know, went amiss, you didn't hear about it, but now you do. So you have to be even more careful and more has that, has that been a passion of yours to take recipes and really work with them to the point that it feels accessible to the home cook? I, I think that's been like a hallmark of who you are. Yeah, I mean, and it, and um, especially, I mean, I've done bread books and I have a cinnamon roll book that I that I also yeah. worked on. So it's all these things. It's like you because you love it so much and you want to make it accessible for other people who might be a little 
put off or scared, um, and you want to take I'm away. I'm scared of bread myself. Take it away, that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, this is fabulous. I'm glad that you. I'm glad that you are enjoying it. So, really, a lifetime devoted to food writing and cooking. Tell us a little bit about the gardener and the grill. I well, love, I love the name of that book just to begin with. Well, it's um, um, Karen Adler and myself. We've been friends for yes, as long have. as we've known you. Yes. Yep. And uh, and we both like to garden, and we both like to grill. And so all of a sudden we went ding, ding, ding. Hello. Uh, I think there's a book in that. So uh, so it's been really a lot of fun, and it's how people want to eat. You can see we have you know at least two. We have two vegetables on our plate. We have the arugula yes. and the and the green tomatoes, yes. and people want to eat more of that. You know, and the herbs in the in the sauce, it's lovely. And of course, grapes in the wine. So mm -hmm. Judith, you've devoted your career to making cooking accessible to the home cook. Um, some of your passions reflect Charles's passion. So this was a nice little match here. I want to thank you for that and for taking time out to be our celebrity taster at Chad's. Oh, it's been a pleasure, Bonnie. Thank you. Mm -hmm.